creating conversation. Got Black Soul Music here on Creating Conversation. I uh, want to thank you for coming on, being a part of this. Thanks for having me, bro. You know. You all support anything positive and forward thinking. Uh huh. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. So uh, let let people know who Black Music is, what you represent as. Black Soul. Black Soul. Nigga, tell <laughs> make 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 sure make sure you let me know. Black Soul Music. What type of artist are you? Uh. I'm primarily an R&B soul artist with dashes of neo soul here and there. Neo soul is definitely rooted in um, the foundation of my music. Um, I feel like what I, I, I attempt to do as an artist is, is impact the culture and move it forward one song at a time. Um, nostalgia is heavy in the branding of my music because you know I feel like there's a certain period of time. Mm. Uh, nostalgia. Yeah, yeah. Mm. A certain period of time yeah. when that music influenced me the most. You know, I'm big on like the 70s, 80s, and then the 90s, of course. Neo Soul. I know Soul. Break down Neo for me, just so. Okay, so Neo Soul um, <clears throat> was actually coined uh, a term during the 90s when they called them the Soul Quarians. Mm. Uh, it was like D'Angelo, Common, Most Def, Erica Badu, mm. uh, uh, Angie Stone. And they were all um, like the, the new movement of what soul was, yeah. but they, they put a little bit more funkier up tempo backdrop to, okay. to what it was they were doing. And they incorporated a lot with hip hop. The reason why they were called the Soul Aquarians was because all of their birthdays were in that were. Aquarius time. Mm, yeah, well, yeah. Dang. yeah well, man. Okay. Yeah, so. Yeah, I, we'll break I was off the knowledge. Heavily influenced by that, that era of music, man, because I felt like it was raw. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, it wasn't all about the singers having the baby oil on their chest and body yeah. rolling and having to do all the extra. You know yeah, like, even though the Angelo did, yeah, even though the he had his little stint where you know. <laughs> yeah, no, but no, nah, his music was that. But that's his music because. was raw, man, and yeah. embodied. It, it was true, and mm -hmm. that's what I liked about neo soul music. Everybody was basically talking about what was going on in the world and their lives, yeah. and they didn't. They didn't have to fabricate any of the content or the topics that were discussed in their music. Okay. And, and I feel like marketable music is relatable music. What type of age range were you when you were listening to the Neo Soul when you picked on to it? When I got hip to Neo Soul music was probably sixth grade. It was at a track meet at Lincoln actually. Mm. And, uh, my boy Bus, man, shout out to Bus. We was uh, warming up for our track meet. The first song he let me hear was uh, the music Soul Child, Just Friends. Okay. And he was like, man, you hit this guy music soul child. Like mm. he had at the time he had just dropped. Just you know dropped, yeah. And uh, I was like, nah, nah. He let me hear that, and that was the first I heard. The boom, 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 boom. I was like, ah. Oh, yeah. uh, I was like hooked ever since. I was yeah. like, who is this guy? You know what I'm saying? Mm. I went got his album, and we put the album rotation into the front cover, melted off. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? How you feel about music soul child being an impact on you as an artist? I always loved his brand of his brand of soul was always like a more polished, uh, polished in presentation. Mm -hmm. But um, with the things that he was able to do vocally, man, was always like you hear a music soul child song, you hear his arrangements of, of his vocals, and you go, "Did this singer really just do that?" Like, yeah, yeah. That yeah. run that fell into this harmony was crazy, mm -hmm. but he make it look so easy. His, his range was crazy from his falsetto to his lower register. Yeah. And so for me, he really embodied like everything you wanted to be as an artist uh, that was still true to him, but had commercial success. Yeah, you know okay. Prior to Neil Soul, you know, I grew up in a household where I was listening to, you know, Teddy Pendergrass, mm. uh, uh, even Lionel Richie was in the house. Yeah. Mom listened to a little about a little bit of everything. Okay. Uh, so I mom's was the one that really put you on. Yeah, mom's was heavy okay. on music. Like that's awesome. Even if you was asleep, if you wanted to, to listen, you wanted to listen to music and she, your speaker you was, was in your room. You was gonna hear that. And you look so peaceful getting that good sleep. Uh. She needed to hear some of that Al Green. Mm -hmm. You was gonna wake up for that Al Green. <laughs> you talk about the range. Do you see that in your music? How do you how do you play? Because we was just listening in the car the other day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. I was like, is that? Nick? <laughs> Nick, was that you? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So. 
you you must take pride in being able to have range and absolutely what you do with your voice. and i think that's why i've identified with some of the artists that have influenced me the way that they have mm-hmm. like the music soul childs like the malows like the barbara gays because coming up and even before i really knew what music was about even before i even decided that i wanted to pursue a career in music yeah. like everybody all used to talk about the range that i had and at the mm-hmm. time i was like oh you know i figured like any, any singer could be able to hit these notes yeah you know what I'm saying? like i didn't really think anything special of it mm-hmm. and then you know as you grow and you understand and you know you hear different styles and you you understand what it is to have a, a, a lower register and a higher register and a falsetto strong yeah. falsetto and then you realize not everybody can do that and then it's like oh damn well i guess i might be on yeah, something then. on the something yeah yeah i didn't decide to pursue a career in music till probably my sophomore year in college okay and but up until then you know it was all sports what clicked in Sports didn't work out. Mm, okay. <laughs> you know, yeah. back then, every ball was life. Ball Everybody was, was life. going to the league. Yeah, yeah. You know, I wasn't really any different than, you know, any other kid out there that felt like they was going to go. So I went from like, like a little mini depression on down. I guess I ain't going to the league. What am I going to do now? Yeah, what am I going to do now? And then I was like, you know, it was always there from the beginning. Okay. Music. Yeah. So it's funny. I had a conversation with one of my partners in college. And like, I ran the idea by him. I was like, what you think? You know what I'm saying? If I were to start... Know, really pursuing this music thing and he was all for it yeah like we had literally just met that year okay and uh he was all for it he was like man i, I would give it a run to see you i mean it couldn't hurt yeah i mean what's the alternative <laughs> Welcome to Creating Conversation. This is the R&B segment. What do you think about R&B in 2015? Like, what is it to you? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I bad, hope though. that wasn't a Trey Songz reference, because <laughs> no. he is not it. No, that was no R&B really doesn't exist in our generation anymore. No, it doesn't. I don't, I don't think it does. Um, I know some people who have tried to come out with R&B nowadays. They are currently signed to artists who were great, like Tank. Yeah, who made man. a lot of good songs and Tyrese being their mentor and they are being told that R&B doesn't sell so they need to make music that is going to touch the generation right now as if like this generation doesn't like love you know what I'm saying yeah. like yes. we're done with love love was I so mean, 1999 that, really we're done it's all about fucking beer well, I mean, but that is, alcohol yeah. anyways, that's a stealing niggas bitches like I'd be so tired of listening to songs where they be like Every, man I'm gonna give your bitch I was wondering like why don't you get your own well, I'm just sitting here about stealing my bitch I just wanna that's all it is now I mean back in the day like you know in the 90s stuff it was all about love you know and now it's all about cheating and getting someone else's girl well, we, like, I mean what what we gotta think like why is it like that like Who's making that happen? Like, is it is it? Cause somebody we said earlier, like, yes. Well, I'm just saying. I'm not, I know, but I'm saying I, earlier. I heard somebody say, well, that's not what this generation wants. I don't believe that. Mm-hmm. That's the truth. The powers that be are are facilitating this and it's right. disintegrating our society, right. especially our black culture, one right. ignorant comment at a time. We don't know how to be romantic. We don't yeah. know how to be romantic. That's what at I think all. it is. Like I think that like romance in our generation is kind of lost. Like it's not cool to be like the guy that brings flowers and goes out on a nice date. It's like that's not cool no more. It's not cool to like love your girl. Like people are like, ooh, you're soft or you're. You corny, gotta pull you're up this. with fifty you know girls. What I'm yeah. yeah. Be in the club, then popping bottles. Cool. Waste then you're cool. Yeah, I see. Waste all your money. And then you, then you make a trip about it. You, then you're cool. You Russell Wilson's trying to bring that back, though. He's trying. Yeah. But he's he's, he's only just not an R&B singer. Yeah. Yeah. How about Tyrese? He just I love Tyrese. His Black Girls album. Yeah, the Black Girls album. He's trying. He's trying. But you see how how that album hasn't been promoted the way. It hasn't been at all. I didn't even know that that was that's on some, yeah, that's on sexy. Knows, that's that knows category. Knows sexy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. but we grew up on that though. So and, and at what point are you grown? Like I thought, yeah, grown exactly. was twenty one. Nobody, Not anymore. you know what I mean? Not no, but, but I'm saying that's just happens with our generation. Because if you think about it, our parents were, you know, in different places. And well, I can't speak for everybody, but most people's parents were probably in different places in their lives that we are now. Like my parents were married at twenty and had two kids by twenty three. Yeah. Right yeah. now, I'm 23, and I'm trying to do way different things than have a family. Like, and that's not even saying well, that I don't believe in love, but it's not really applicable anymore. Like now, people have to go to college. Right. Like, you can't afford a wedding at 26. It's that's a 20 racks right there. If <laughs> you need a 14 thousand dollar ring, it's not happening. Like, it's just isn't not, it's not sad, applicable. Isn't it, isn't it sad how everything we talk about that we're kind of upset about, like at the end of it, like the root of it is always money? What do you guys think happened to R&B? Like, what happened to it? Music moves 
what happened to it. rotation. Like, yeah, if music true. started this place, they try to evolve it just the same way social media does and the same way other things do. They try to evolve everything and g make things grow, but that doesn't mean you have to leave stuff behind. And I think they're right. trying to leave R&B behind because they're so focused on turning up and doing yeah. all this stuff that's selling that they're not willing to take the risk and do something that was working. Well, there's always been turn up music. And with turn up, I, I assume you're talking about dance music, correct? It, it doesn't even have to be dance music, because our turn up Party music, music is, my bad. We yeah, turn up to R&B, you know what I'm saying? Exactly, but exactly. No but, yeah, but like, my thing is that in like, for one, in, in R&B, it was about love. And when, and when it was in its essence. In hip hop, it was about consciously letting people know what's going on in the, the, the inner city. They got rid of all of that for both genres. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And now it's only about turn up and it's about pot product pr placement yeah. you know what i'm saying right. you got i watched the video so i think a yg video yeah. and they had avion all in this Woo! you know what i'm saying we don't even fall in love with the the, the artist souls anymore you feel what i'm saying yeah. like we it's love like, michael jackson trendy. not just because the music yeah, but for who he was you know what i'm saying uh yeah. exactly exactly we don't it's all about corporations well i think people too. filter in and out so fast yeah. now like yeah. There's I think the first artists that were hot in high school, I couldn't remember their names even if I But you'll hear some songs, though. You'll hear you know some songs, I mean? and it'll be like, it'll bring it'll be you like, right oh back to it. Yeah. But, but, that my but that's just because it's nostalgia. It's not necessarily yeah. because it was impactful. Like, yeah. there's Mariah Carey true. songs, yes. like, you know, go listen to don't go hunt, like that. You're not ever forgetting who that's right. by. Go listen, to, that go listen to uh, yeah. Waterfalls by TLC. Ooh. Go listen to Waterfalls. Not only is it going to take you back to where you were at 95 when it came out, but you're also going to get a message in it, and, and that might sink into you and it might help your life. Yeah. Today, uh, so Trey Songs and Minute Six. Uh, like, all right, man. I think that it has a lot to do with like where the power is coming from because whenever R&B and blues was like a big thing, it was powerful for the black culture. It was powerful for the black community. Now we have every single top of music exec being these white males. Do they really want us to be in this position of power where people are really getting these soulful absolutely messages? Absolutely not. Like, absolutely not. You know what I'm saying? So obviously they're going to get these black artists who have absolute talent and they're going to promote them and push them to do pop songs. You know what I'm saying? Like that's what it is. Chris Brown and Terry Songz, all these people who start off who could be could be R&B right. singers, they're like, no, 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 let's get you to sell yourself out and, and produce some pop. You sell know? your people out too. And sell your people out. What, this is what we 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 uh we imitate what we see our stars uh, speak about and talk about. It comes back to money, like you said. Like they're doing, they're selling out our generation and our people specifically. Like they're inundating us with all of this negativity. But why? This toxicity. <laughs> why aren't they talking because, about drunk and love they, and country music? They won't right? Why are they not talking about country music? Why aren't they, music? they talking about, you they know what I'm saying? I'm don't. a stoner, I'm a stoner, I'm a stoner. So what do you guys think it says about our society? Like, what does it, it say says, about our you society? Know, it's we're we're headed in the wrong path. Yeah. It ain't yeah. us. It ain't us, though. But we're headed in the wrong path. Naturally, it ain't us. I mean, if you're buying it, if you're downloading it, if you're listening to it, if you're, you know what I'm saying? Like, at the end of the day, you're perpetuating the cycle. Yeah. If all of us you are, are just like, you know what, I am not. You are, the but we're not the ones either. that, like, if, if you ask uh, a talented person, hey, oh, we're going to give you full creative control over your album, where are you going to go with it? Yeah. I'm sure they're going to say, I'm, I'm going to rap about, I'm going to sing about love, I'm going to sing about the uh, the economy, I'm going to sing about what's going on in my city, my Con community. On a conscious but level. They, they don't give that. They ain't, and, they, and if they do, they're giving, they're giving a couple of guys that. They're giving Kendrick that, they're giving J. Cole that. Who, well, who, 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 who are people three? listening to? Yeah, though, who's like, your three factors? Real. Like, just go around and like, who's your three R&B factors that are just in that category right now? One single Nobody? Chris Brown is that guy. But Chris Brown, he's not R&B, really. What is he? He's just an artist. He's just an artist. He makes what they say, dude. He's a roller coaster. Coaster. All right, well, now, then, I mean, he's, he's, uh, too, he's very, he's, not he's the most talented singer. and he's the most impactful. That's why they haven't given up us the most BS. Bitches in marijuana, bitches ain't loyal. Uh, what's his other joint he has out? And I love Chris Brown, I think he's dope, but we know this yeah. music ain't coming from his mind, his creative yeah. mind. We know what's the up. the internet, the weekend. But back in the day, actually, if we Frank think Ocean, about- like Party Ocean. Next Door. Party like, next I mean, door. we got a cash center, but it's not- Is yeah. Party They're Next Door R&B? Come on. It's like I mean, real airy, like, like you know saying, but like, I, mean, I almost it's... feel like you have to kind of redefine what you think R&B is at this you point. You know, music, you have to just music's not. Music's I'm, 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 I'm all about Tyrese, Genuine, Tank. Like that's that's where I that's those are people I like. Let but me put it there's in this no one like that no more. Well, I mean, I guess it's still around, but. Can you take them and go with your lady and play them and feel like, all right, we're gonna have a good night? As not in, only that, a romantic not only that, night. but we might go forever. We might last forever. No, I want to marry or. Am I gonna slap them and be like, man, let's go to the club? <laughs> <laughs>
talk about being at your lowest and being able to come and use that as, as, as some fuel to, to get to where you are now. At that particular time, as far as things that I was looking to pursue, it was probably like my second biggest letdown. My first biggest letdown was uh, uh, not getting into Morehouse. Okay. Uh, I'd applied to Morehouse. And mind you, at the time, um, you know, I was coming out of school, out of the IB program, I had a 3.95 GPA. I remember this. I tested high on my test scores. I remember this. Yeah. I, cl- I was like, this was like a like so, something that ha- happened at, at school and people yeah, every, were talking about it. Everybody was like, man, I thought he was a shoe man. Shoe like, That's crazy. Yeah. So uh, what, what ended up happening, and you know, because of course I appealed it to get the review, mm-hmm. the dean had looked and said, um, you know, that they had made a mistake on my admissions decision. Mm-hmm. So I'm thinking like, how's college making a mistake on your missions? Yeah. You know? But then after visiting there, I can fully understand how they made a mistake. Because, you know, even though, don't get me wrong, of course, it's a, it's a very prestigious HBCU. Yeah. But just like any HBCU, they got some people there that you'd be like, damn, who's onto your you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And um, so what they were going to do, what the dean offered to do was um, allow me to resubmit my, my stuff for a uh, second semester transfer. Okay. Um, so I was pumped. I'm like, okay, cool. I'm gonna do a little semester here at University of Puget Sound, and I'm out. Yeah. I'm headed to Atlanta. What they didn't tell me was that you don't get the same financial aid package as you do as an incoming freshman, as you do for a transfer. Wow. So in order for me to try to get that any anywhere near somewhat of that scholarship package, I would have had to establish residency first. Mm, so you would have had to do a whole year in it in Georgia. In Georgia before I even started. You even and started. I was like, at the time, man, it just it was too much extra, extra for what I was prepared for at the time. And, yeah. and UPS actually gave me a great financial aid package. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? I was one of the one um, Newcomb scholarship recipients that they, they give out one a year. Okay. I was at one. Sheesh. It was like a $20,000 scholarship yeah. um, based on merit. And I had that and a bunch of other scholarships that are all geared for Washington State schools. So you yeah. so was in there. I really had to, that was a part of me growing up like instantly is like, okay, do I go there because I want to go there Mm -hmm. because I know it's going to be a great time or do I do what's, you know, probably going to be better for my future in the long run. So it was a tough decision. Like I went back and forth with it, talked to my uncles about it and, you know, they gave me the real about, you know, why I wanted to go there and I knew deep down in my mind why I wanted to go there. Okay. I wouldn't want to go to Atlanta. Exactly. I I started doing like the little mixtape joints just and throwing them out there just to, anonymously though. Yeah, <laughs> anonymously. Yeah, anonymously yeah. just to test them out because you know MySpace was still kind of on its way out yeah. at the time. So I throw it up on the page, you know, mm. just to kind of see uh, what, what people take on yeah, yeah, what yeah. feedback. You know, when people started going, who's that, who's that? Oh, you know, it's this guy I know. This guy I know. He's like, He's like, like yeah. you, you, you rock with him though? So, you know? so, so, what made you go that route? Like, putting it out with no art, like, not you behind it. You just wanted to. Really, it was uh, a lack of confidence at the time. Yeah. Like, you know, I, people have always told me I can sing, but mm. until you really believe that, you know, because unlike a lot of people is, is, that I'm affiliated with in the area that have, they've known, like, Music is what I wanted to do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like this, I want to be a rapper. I want to be a singer. Mm-hmm. Now, that wasn't me. Diving into trying to pursue a career in it, uh, initially there was a lack of confidence. Yeah. In it. I was like, man, you know, what? If, what if people just telling me this because of their homies or because they know me? What am I really? I'm terrible. You yeah. see people on American Idol all the time that come from places where people be like, yeah, no, yeah, you're good. You're you're, good. you're really good. And they get out there and they're like, I don't know who lied to you. Yeah, bro, this exactly. Ain't this, this ain't <laughs> this ain't for you. That's really real. Like to to be able to explain why like I just I had lack of confidence. You know what I'm saying? People people shy away from saying things like that. Right. But if it's real, it's something like you said. It's relatable to other people. They can feel like I always thought I could sing, but you know I never really heard nobody else tell me that that I was good. It's good to connect with other people that really are on the same wavelength as you. And you know what I'm saying? You feel it when you talk to them like educated get people around that's that's the main thing that we got going with creating conversation and everybody that that's involved is just the same type of mindset we're just trying to uplift and provide a platform for everyone and you know what i'm saying make it happen in everybody's lives so i think it's important because you know in a, in a day and age now where social media is is prevalent it's like people don't really get a chance to get to know anybody anymore yeah. like you know it's, it's interesting to me because you know, just like I know everybody that's known me coming up, 
you know, has known me to be a scholar and an athlete. Yeah, yeah. Everybody music wise that have only that have only known me through music, you know, when they hear that I've done stuff scholastically, they're like, what? Yeah. yeah. We are here in Tacoma, Washington at Soul Restaurant. I'm here with one of the owners. Natural Allah. And uh, we just want to thank you for taking the time out today. To talk to us here at Creating Conversation. Soul. Obviously, the name tells you the type of food that we're eating here, that you serve here. Um, what other things go into the food that you have here on the menu? A lot of love. Okay. <laughs> Um, what we've done here at Souls, we've created a restaurant where you can get American soul food, but at the same time get uh, what we call Southern soul food also from Latin countries. So you get uh, a taste of uh, Puerto Rico, a taste of Peru, a taste of the Dominican Republic, and a taste of Cuba. Tell me a little bit about how Soul came to be a restaurant in Tacoma. Um, well, myself and my partner Jennifer, who's hiding over there, um, <laughs> it took uh, a lot of um, hard work for us to be able to get what you see right here. Um, we were both uh, social workers by trade, and uh, during the economic downturn, we decided we wanted to try to find something else to do. Um, what we created first was a wine lounge that was in downtown Tacoma. It was okay. called uh, Vinum. We had that for about uh, three or four years. Um, and then we got a uh, salon, uh, also in Tacoma, that we began to work with, and uh, we quickly sold that and wanted to do something different. And a realtor that we were working with showed us this space, and this vision began to come into play. What were some things that you learned in the process of making this establishment be successful as it is? Um, definitely just business etiquette. Okay. Um, how to operate a business and the behind the scenes aspects of running a business. Mm -hmm. um, people see a business and they generally think it's just you going into a building and doing or selling whatever it is that you're selling, but their ideas of knowing how to do your taxes, yeah. there's ideas of knowing how to budget, you know, how much you're going to pay your employees, what your employees are, or hours they're going to work mm -hmm. in order to make your business successful. Because obviously you don't want um, 10 employees on a uh, slow day, yeah. so you have to figure out what your days are and what works best for the business. Okay. What can I expect when I, well, right when I walk through the doors? First thing you can expect when you walk through the doors of soul is the smell simply because we're cooking all day, so we're doing fried chicken, we're doing jambalaya, we're doing gumbo, we're doing you know the collard greens and different things that um, are associated with soul food. Mm -hmm. um, and then you start to notice the decor. Our decor is very eclectic, um, so you'll see some things that uh, remind you of the South, you'll see things that remind you of uh, you know New Orleans, you'll see things that remind you of different uh, parts of the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. So it's just an idea of getting a person to get that feeling of the soul experience. What went into the decor of um, and, we, and we wanted to take away from that connotation of a soul food restaurant being like uh, a shack mm -hmm. or being in a place that's like in a rundown area. So we have uh, glass tops on the tables, we have linen on the tables, um, linen uh, napkins and tablecloths. So it, we wanted to give the person the feel that our food is important. Mm -hmm. And as a customer, you're important. Yeah. So those small things, I think, kind of give the customer that idea. Soul is is one of my favorite restaurants in Tacoma. Um, I really like what you guys do here and how you guys separate yourself from other different places. Um, and it's next level. And I always admire anybody that's doing anything in their field of expertise, and they do it next level. Thank you for coming on and creating conversations. Thank you. Appreciate that. You got it. And uh, let's go. Let's go enjoy some of this food. What is the state of R and B? How, how do you? What do you feel like that looks like? Sit up, this. Yeah. R and B man. Look, first of all. I come from a time frame where R&B is always going to be near and dear to my heart. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it's embedded. Yeah. But today, man, it's like, I mean, 
to put it really unprofessionally, man, niggas stop begging for the pussy, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You listen to all these songs, these hoes ain't loyal, and it's today we're in a day and age where it's all about making the music. R&B is the music that you go pick the chick up to. You know, mm-hmm. like Todd Dolla Sign makes the music you go pick the chick up to, yeah, or yeah. you drop the chick off. The, the, you know what the, I'm the, saying? The, yeah. You Nobody's, can drive to when you get there. The R&B that I know was the music that you're trying to slow body roll to. Yeah. When you in the heat of the moment, that's what R&B was to me. Mm, you know what I'm saying? Or body if you know you fucked up yeah. and you going through something, you're going through that's something. what R&B was to me. Like, damn, that was really my baby. Mm-hmm. Now it's like niggas is, I don't know if they too hard or, you know what I'm saying, too Niggas cool. act like they can't fall in love no more. Niggas is too cool. They too cool, man. Yeah. You know? And it's like... That's almost like saying you don't really need these women no more. I don't know about that. I don't nah. Know <laughs> nah. Not everybody else feels about that, but I still yeah. need these women. R&B artists, as far as I knew, they was throwing the oops, man. Yeah. That was the music you could go ahead and have your lady. You could have a pleasant evening with, you know, mm-hmm. trying to do the romantic thing, you know, the love thing. You could do that. Definitely you could do that. Mm-hmm. Wine and dine and you know. You can't wine and then and dine at the it. end of the but at the end of the night of the function too. You, like we was just saying, shout out DJ Kareem oh, Supreme. Man, legend in the town, man. Legend. Shout out my guy, DJ Kareem Supreme, man. He knew the definition of the R&B alley oop. Break it down. Now, mind you, we was youngsters. Uh-huh. During these things, the, you know, the Prince Hall. The, the, yeah. The Talk about center it. Center dances. Talk the about Britney it. Hall. Yeah. Kareem would play the fast stuff in the beginning, you know, to get everybody turned up. Yeah. And, you know. 99 in the 2000s. But then he'd have that moment where he'd be like, all right, fellas, ladies. You know. We finna slow it down. Okay. Fellas, this your chance. This is if your you chance. If you had game in you. Anything. This was your moment. Yeah. And Kareem would throw the oops so cold. Kareem would play something like Sex is on my mind. Mm-hmm. Freaking you. And then T-shirt and my panties on in a row. Sheesh. Now, if you couldn't win, anybody that knows those songs. Yeah, 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 if yeah. If you couldn't win to that. It just wasn't in the car. It wasn't. It wasn't meant it to wasn't happen. It wasn't meant for you it to was, be there it wasn't. at that time when it everything was. was going down. Yeah, I want to talk about some of the people and producers and artists and people that you've worked with in your past. Who you're working with now? I've been blessed, man, to work with a lot of dope people yeah. industry-wise that have uh, accomplished a lot. Um, I started at about 2008. Um, I was able to link up with uh, these rappers uh, called the Parker Brothers um, mm-hmm. through recommendation of a fellow uh, musical colleague. Connects. Um, and, you know, he was working on his album at the time, or their album at the time, I should say. And so they connected me with the producer that they were working with, which at the time was Cuddy Fresh from The Business. Mm-hmm. You know, The Business was popular for... Boom. They had Boom. Every Girl in the World. Every Girl in the A bunch of stuff for 50 Cent, Robin Thicke. Like, so much stuff going on. They were making a killing in the industry. The Business. Tomorrow. So, um, they were shooting me stuff and, you know, to see what I could do to it. Yeah. So, you know, in my mind, I'm looking at every opportunity like, this is it. Killing it. Every single opportunity is, this is it. Killing the game. I've always told myself from the time I step foot in, I don't want to ever feel complacent. I don't, I don't, I don't ever try to minimize the potential of the opportunities that have been in front of me. Because Amen. you never really know. Amen. You never know. Because look, I'm not on, but they're on. They're on. So in, in my in my mind, every every time our opportunity, I get a chance to showcase my talent on the track. That's my audition. Not only am I trying to go kill them, yeah. I'm turnaround time because they expect a lot of people, you know, to whatever, given their situation, to make excuses or yeah. to prolong the situation. But I know time. how the industry works. Yeah. It's like for every person that's not ready, they got a hundred people lined up that are ready for exactly. the same opportunity. Okay. So I try not to waste time when they send me something. I, I, Stop whatever I'm doing. Like, look, fellas, I'm going to get with you in a second. I got to head to the studio and go ahead and knock this out. Yeah. Out of the catalog that I had been submitting um, through them, Cuddy had kind of compiled those, and he was rocking with me. So he invited me to um, his uncle's house at the time when he was putting together this uh, this writing group called the Ar- Architects Music Group. Okay. So I was one of the uh, first generation writers for the Architects Music Group. Um, oh. And with that, we built a, a good number of catalog of songs that he took with him to a seminar in New York. Okay. Now, in the seminar that he took to New York, um, there was a bunch of label executives there and, and managers for artists there. One of those being um, Big Pooh's manager, Big Doe. Okay. So Big Doe had heard some of the stuff from my catalog. He went back to Big Pooh and was like, man, there's this cat out in Tacoma, Washington that you need to rock with, man. Yeah. Like, I didn't even know they had soul in Tacoma, Washington like yeah. that. So, Nobody uh, do. After you gonna make it told happen. me this, you know, I kind of tried to sit and wait 
and see if he was going to contact me or not. But me being me, I'm like, man, why don't I hit him up and, you know, just take a shot in the dark. You yeah. never know. What do, I, what do I have to lose yeah, at the time? Exactly. You know what I'm saying? I don't have a rapport with him at all. Mm-hmm. So I don't have really anything to lose. Yeah. So I hit him up on Twitter. You know, like, what's up, man? When are we going to work? Man, I'd love to be the opportunity to be able to work with you. Yeah. He hits me back, like, a couple minutes later, like, oh, I've been meaning to get with you. Okay. Uh, send me your number. And then he starts following me. So I'm yeah. pumped. I'm yeah. like, now, hey, he's, really, he's, he's ready to work. Yeah, like, let's go. Ready, send me, but I'm ready. Yeah. So, you know, he, he, I sent him my number. He calls me. We're chopping it up for a second. I got him on speakerphone, you know, because the homies ain't believing that that's really him. I'm yeah. like, man, this, 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 this is tight. So he tells me he has a track to send me, um, which ended up being the song Free that we did, which was one of the singles, these singles off of his, uh, his uh, album Dirty Pretty Things. Okay. So initially when he sent the track, he was like, I'm going to send you this track. I want you to do what you do on it. Um, and, you know, there's no guarantees, but if you make the projects, I'll be hitting you up later, you know, to get your information for your ASCAP and all that good stuff. Yeah. So I, I did the track, sent it back. I hadn't heard from him for like three or four months. And he hits me asking me for my information. I was like, mm. oh, on the album? Yeah. On the album? He's like, yeah, you're on the album. So <laughs> that's that's kind of where it all started. And, and from that point, like we were rocking, I was on his uh, uh, Fat Boy Fresh Volume 2. Um, I had a couple joints on there. I was on uh, Fat Boy Fresh 2.5. Okay. Um, and most recently, the Worst Paint Pictures, which is took him on, on tour overseas where he is right now. Sheesh. Appreciate you coming on. Black Soul Music, man, this is somebody that we really believe in in Tacoma. We really are pushing and supporting. We're really trying to make it happen. R&B wise, (laughs) ain't nobody messing with this man right here, man. Man, I appreciate you guys. Thank you for having me. Uh, It's always a blessing to be able to, you know, let people in on on the process of this grind. Yeah, man. It's not not as glorifying as as everybody sees, like you said, on the outcome. Yeah. I try to make it easy for everybody, man. One stop shop. You can find all my social networks, all my videos, all my upcoming music, all my um, performance schedule, on my website. That's www.blacksoulmusic.com. Black B L A K K Soul Music spelled the regular way. dot com. Appreciate you coming on. And then you know what I'm saying. Next time I can beat you in some oh, of these goddamn balls, like, boy. Ah. It's a lot different swimming with the sharks than it is watching on National Geographic. <laughs> I'm gonna put them away for a long time. Hey man, bro. the math is there, and I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna make it happen. <laughs> hey, you know. Math man is my specialty. Yeah, you know. Money. You gotta know how to do that. You count money. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You from the town, you gotta know how to you do that. You gotta know how to do that. <laughs> nah, but we out of here, man, creating conversation, two C. It's a trip that you say, proving people wrong because I was stuck in a mode of, I have to prove those people wrong. Remember those people who said you were too small? And I got to a point where it was like, why am I so consumed with proving people wrong? Creating conversation.